much for tuning in. This is Narena Guaya with Godly Dreams Ministries. Today I'm going to be sharing with you something a little bit different out of the norm that I normally do. Um, today I'm going to be sharing with you something that my daughters placed in my heart to do a few months back. They kept telling me, you know, mom, why don't I um, do YouTube videos on, on how to cook? that my daughters um, placed in my heart um, they kept telling me mom why don't you do a YouTube video and showing us how to cook because constantly they would call me and ask me you know how do I do this or how you know how to make rice and stuff like that I was like so many times I try to show you guys but <laughs> you guys are still home so they're like okay but they really didn't you know appreciate that and the importance of learning while you're home how to cook so um, now they're like, okay, mom, do a YouTube video. So that way, whenever I need to know something, I could um, just look up the video. So I, you know, the Lord just placed in my heart, what better way to do a YouTube video teaching you how to cook, but as well as bringing the word of God. Amen. So um, for those who want to watch my video, follow along and learn how to cook, they're also hearing the word of God. So this is something that the Lord kept telling me and placing in my heart today, you know, just do it, just do it. And um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And whenever the Lord leads me to do it, if this is something that continue, he puts in my heart to continue doing, I will do it because I am obedient to the Holy Spirit. And I do know that the Lord is trying to reach out to as many people as possible. And what better way to enter, you know, into the home through, through food. And because um, I do know us Hispanic people, we love to cook. <laughs> we love to cook and we love to eat. Um, well, me, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican and um, I do cook, but it's not something that I really, really enjoy doing. But um, we, we do love to serve through food. Um, so today I'm going to be making Puerto Rican rice. And um, when I first got married, it was a little hard. It was a little hard to do because I knew how to make knew how to make Puerto Rican. I know how to make Puerto Rican rice, I should say, but my husband's Mexican, and um, so he wasn't used to eating Puerto Rican rice because Mexican rice is a little bit softer. Puerto Rican rice is a little bit harder um, or drier, I should say. Um, but Mexican rice is more moist. So I learned to do Spanglish rice. <laughs> so I kind of do a little bit of both. <laughs> um, so anyways, today I'm going to be sharing, sharing with you how to make Puerto Rican rice. And um, believe it or not, in Rockford, um, they do not sell sofrito. So um, I normally make the sofrito, but I don't have any today. And sofrito is something that every Puerto Rican puts inside their rice. But however, it's still going to taste good. So um, today, normally what you can do is um, you can put the rice, you put all the ingredients and then the rice and you mix it and then add the water at the end. But this way is my, my faster, lazier way because um, I'm usually in a hurry with the kids. So I start putting the water to boil while I start getting everything ready. And um, so today the word that I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm going to teach you how to make Puerto Rican rice. And I'm also going to be talking about manifesting in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. So um, please have your pen and paper ready to take notes. And good thing this is a video that you can stop and rewind. And um, so the Lord is going to be uh, feeding you physically and spiritually at the same time. Praise God. So um, pretty much what I use is um, sazon. You need a package of sazon. This is what I use, and I usually put two packets of sazon inside the rice, okay? And um, you'll be needing this. I like to put, this is chicken broth. They sell these like by the cubes, and if you can see it, it's chicken broth or the powder flavor. So I put in one package of that, okay? And then the gandulas, they're green. Pencil piece. These are the ones that um, they use for the Puerto Rican rice. So we use one can of these. I empty out the water, the juice that comes with it, and one can of tomato sauce. It doesn't necessarily have to be Goya, but um, that's what I have. And then a spoon of salt, a spoon of oil. 
And it depends how much rice you're making. I have a big family, so normally I use like seven cups of water and maybe about five um, cups of rice, more or less, so it depends. So here we go. I'm gonna start adding all these ingredients. So I'm gonna start with the sazon. Two packs of that. And a pack of the chicken broth. The whole can of tomatoes sauce. I like to use, some people use half a can. I like to use the whole thing. Can of beans. Okay, a spoon of salt. This is like a, one of those cooking spoons. Since this one's a little small one, you can use a little bit more. This is kind of pretty much to your taste. So usually a spoon, see a small one. So I usually use a spoon or a spoon and a half. A spoon and a half should be good. And two spoons of, the, of oil. This size a spoon. about five cups of rice. A way to tell if you have enough rice too, um, usually your, your, um, your spoon is supposed to stand in the middle of the rice. If it falls to the side, that means you have too much water. Um, but for Mexican rice, it would probably be fine. But for Puerto Rican rice, you want to make sure that the spoon stands up in the middle. This is not necessarily a cup, this little scoop here I have, so it's not measuring it right. But you can pretty much tell. You see that? It's standing straight. So we put that and then we want it to boil. Once it starts boiling, once the, and you wanna keep it while you're placing everything in there, you wanna keep it, you know, the stove on. My stove has numbers. Um, so you wanna keep it, you know, at least on six, you know, so it can start six, seven, so it can start heating up. So maybe about medium as you're putting everything in there. You can mix it around, everything in there, and then, you know, the rice, mix it so it can get all the flavoring. And once it's nice and hot, you add the water, about, you know, five, seven cups of water. It depends, again, how much um, rice, how much of a family. So pretty much seven cups of water to about five cups of rice. Um, but it depends, again, how you want it. If you want it more soft, you're going to, you know, it's going to cover. The water definitely covers the top of the rice. And if the spoon is standing, that means it's, it's good. If it's too, you know, falls too fast, that means it's too much water. Um, if it's a little bit here and there, you know, then that's good because then it's more of a Mexican rice that comes going to come out softer. So once it starts boiling, then you want to cover it. And then you want to keep it kind of a little bit high until it starts boiling. Once it starts boiling, you're going to lower it to like about four um, or medium and then just cover it and you want to just let it sit for maybe about 15 minutes 10, 10 minutes and then move it around cover it and let it sit for about 15 minutes it should take about you know not more than a half an hour 25 minutes it depends on your stove and how high you have it so um i usually move my rice like about three times um until it's done so you know just time it here and there and just move it so while this is boiling, before I cover that, I'll let it boil. Um, I want to get into the Word of God, and today I'm going to be talking about manifesting in the gifts of the Spirit. And um, I had explained in my last video about the gifts of the Spirit and what they were. And today I'm going to be talking about manifesting in the gifts of the Spirit. And a Bible verse that I want to read because the Lord tells us he doesn't want us to be ignorant in this. This is something that he really wants us to know. And is 1 Corinthians 12.1. It says, spiritual gifts. 
As for the spirit, brothers and brothers, gifts, as for the spiritual brothers, gifts I want you to understand well this matter. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. So I warn you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God can curse Jesus. No one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Praise God. 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 7, it says, Now to each one the manifestation of the gifts is given for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12, 28-30 reads, Here are some of the of the parts of God some of the parts God has anointed for the church it says first our apostles second prophets third teachers then those who do miracles those who have the gifts of healing those who can help others those who have the gifts of leadership those who speak in unknown languages are are we all apostles are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gifts of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown language? Do we all ha have the ability to interpret unknown language? Of course not. That's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 12, 11, It is the one and only Spirit who disperts all these gifts he alone decides which gift each person should have. Praise God. So it's very important that we know what is the spiritual, what is, what is, what are we talking about? It's very important that we know that all God's children, we all have spiritual gifts. As God's children, he gives them to all of us. Okay, I'm moving this around before I turn it because it's boiling. And then I'm going to close that and then lower it. About medium so it says knowing your spiritual gifts will enable you to find your place of ministry in the local church so the spiritual gift is given to you to help others to build up the body of Christ knowing your spiritual gifts will enable you to determine your priorities knowing your spiritual gift will be will be of great help in discerning God's will for you Every Christian has at least one spiritual gift. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. No Christian has all the gifts. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 28 through 30. We cannot choose our gifts. God does that job. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Believers will, be, will, account, will be accounted to the Lord for how they use their gifts that one you can find in Matthew 25, 14 through 19. Gifts used without love don't accomplish God's purpose. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Spiritual gifts are to build up the body. 1 Peter 4 through 10. We must not be confused with spiritual gifts and the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, fruits of the Spirit, sorry. We must not be confused with spiritual gifts and fruits of the Spirit, okay? They're two different things. The spiritual gift is pretty much something that we can do, okay? That's something that we can do. That's something that God gives us. It's a gift that the Lord gives us of something that we can do, like the gift of prophecy or the gift of healing or, you know, so that's something that we can do, a gift that He gives us that we can do. The fruits of the Spirit is the character, our character in, in Christ. So it's um, how we act. Love, joy, self-control, peace, happiness. So all these are the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. So how can we discover our spiritual gifts? We must read the Bible, read God's Word. And it's good to be around people that are gifted, that are manifesting in the gifts of the Spirit. And, you know, to get to know those people so they can share their experience with you. So how do you know if, if you have this gift? First of all, when you feel like you have a gift, this is something that you will enjoy doing. You'll feel peace about it. You'll feel pleasure in doing it. 
So that's something that I wanted to share with you because it's very important that we figure out the gifts that we have as Christians, believers in Jesus Christ. He gives all of us gifts. We need to be manifesting in those gifts. We're going to be accountable for not using the gifts that the Lord has given us. And the Lord is the one who decides. So put it in prayer. If you feel that there's a gift that you have or, you know, put it in prayer, give it to God. And he will reveal to you what are your gifts. The more you pray um, and start, start doing that, you know, start manifesting in that gift, in that area. If you truly take pleasure in it, you're going to be manifesting in this, you know, this is something that you really um, enjoy doing. And, um, you know, see what the Lord places in your heart to do. So I, I want to thank you so much for this time that you've given me. I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that your home is smelling so, like some nice, uh, good Puerto Rican food. <laughs> I'm going to be making some Puerto Rican rice today with um, some fried chicken. And um, that's what I'm going to be sharing. I can't, for my next video, maybe I can do the chicken part with you. Um, but today, you can even get a roasted chicken. A per you could buy a roasted chicken if you don't know how to make one. <laughs> At least you know how to make the rice. <laughs> so thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I pray that this message was a blessing to you. Until next time, I want to leave you with John 8, 32. You should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Which much love your sister in Christ. And if you haven't picked up the new book that I just came out with, please view that book. It's called Godly Dreams, Your Seat at the Table. It's all inspired by God. And, um, you know, I know it's going to be a blessing to you and a blessing to everyone you share with. So thank you so much for your love and support. You can pick that book up on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com. After you purchase the book, please leave a review so other people can purchase it. And you can also walk into any bookstore, Christian store near you, and just pre-order it there. The more people that order it at the store, they will have to have it on their shelves. They'll, they'll start producing it there at their shop, in their stores. Thank you so much for your love and support. Until next time, I'd like to leave you with John 8 to 32. You should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.